let's talk about how to hold the camera. So like we talked about before, we want to make sure that we're wearing the neck strap. Um, I'm not wearing it right now just so I'm not in the way of all my recording equipment, uh, but we'd want that around our neck. You want to keep your right hand uh, tightly gripped on the camera grip. You want your left hand to be holding the lens or the bottom of the camera from underneath. You want your index finger on the shutter button, so that's this button here uh, right on the front top of the grip. And uh, there's some things you can do also with body posture that can help avoid camera shake uh, and blurring in your image that isn't intentional. So uh, it helps to keep your arms and your elbows sort of braced against your body and to stand with one foot slightly ahead of the other. And that's going to give you the most sort of stable base of shooting uh, handheld without a tripod. Um, so we've got most of our settings set up in the camera. Let's go ahead and look at how to preview what we're shooting. Um, first and foremost here, I'm gonna take the lens cap off. Now, this is not a twist, this is actually a push and pull. So we're gonna push these little tabs in on the center and just pull this lens cap off. Uh, you wanna make sure not to touch the lens, don't get any dust or grease on it. Uh, if you do, just use a microfiber cloth uh, to wipe it off. Um, so we can preview our shots by looking through the viewfinder with our eye. We also have the option of a live view, uh, which will show on the camera's LCD screen. So let's go ahead and click the little camera icon uh, next to the viewfinder. And here we can see uh, I get a preview of something that I might shoot. So nothing too interesting right now. We're just pointed uh, at the surface here. So obviously you'd want to go out and find something interesting to shoot. Uh, notice that in this live view mode, I've got some settings down here that will show me uh, what, for example, my ISO is set to, what my aperture is set to. Uh, right now I'm in aperture priority mode, so the camera is going to figure out the shutter speed for me. So I don't actually see that because I don't need to worry about that. Um, and if I, again, use the little dial uh, just behind the shutter button, you can see I can dial that up or down and my aperture setting is changing there. And for the most part, uh, the camera is going to be able to balance out uh, whatever I've got the aperture set to with an appropriate shutter speed to get uh, an even exposure. Uh, now, that exposure meter is going to come more into play if we're in manual mode. So let's switch to manual mode. And I can see now, you know, my preview is quite dark. Um, I can make changes to both the uh, aperture and the shutter speed. So probably for a darker scene like this, I'd want to drop this down. Now I'm down to about a 15th of a second, so that's a fairly slow shutter speed. Generally, if you're going to have anything that might move in your scene, you want to be maybe a 250th of a second or faster on the shutter speed. Uh, so, you know, I'm not even seeing the exposure meter bar here. Uh, you know, you want that little vertical line to be centered uh, in the middle to tell you that you've got, you know, a relatively well exposed scene. Um, so I might want to. For example, go and adjust the ISO, uh, maybe bump it up to something higher than 400. Uh, that would help me have a little bit more flexibility in terms of setting things manually. Uh, but again, I'm just going to jump back to aperture priority, uh, let the camera just sort of figure it out for me. And if we go into our live view mode, now I can see uh, the camera's figuring out a good shutter speed for me. So we're able to preview our shots. Uh, we also have the option with this lens, uh, since it's a zoom lens, to set our field of view. So we could do a wider shot uh, that captures more of the area in front of the camera, or we could do a narrower shot uh, that is sort of tighter in on a given subject. So if I turn the zoom ring, and that's the sort of big central area of the lens, if I turn that to the right, I'm going to get a wider shot. If I turn that to the left, I'm going to get a narrower shot. And in general, when you're framing a shot, uh, you want to set the field of view first before setting the focus. So let's just pretend that uh, this little object here is going to be my subject. Now I might be a little bit too close here, uh, but I can go ahead and set my field of view. And since we're so close, I probably want something relatively wide. So I've got my focus mode set to autofocus. And to use that, I can just hold down the shutter button halfway. So I'm just really gently pushing on the shutter button, not clicking it all the way. Uh, and you can see the camera is automatically adjusting its lens uh, to focus on the subject. And when it's focused, I'll hear a little beep, and then I can go ahead and push that shutter button all the way. 
Now, if I were to switch to manual focus, uh, it's very important for me to look through the viewfinder uh, at the thing I'm focusing on. Um, so I'm out of frame here, but uh, you can trust me that I'm, I'm looking at that live view and I'm making sure that my subject is nice and sharp uh, and I'm varying the focus just by manually twisting this focus ring on the end of the lens here. Now, it's important that I'm in manual focus mode uh, for that to be able to twist. If I can't twist it, that means I'm still in autofocus. So again, don't force it. Uh, and I'll just be looking through the viewfinder uh, to see if my subject is sharp. Um, so one thing we can do here, let's just get this in frame so you can see an example. Uh, we can, in our, and so one thing we can do here uh, with our live view is use these uh, plus and minus icons uh, up on the top back of the camera grip and we can zoom in to a part of the image uh, and that can really help us sort of fine tune whether that's in focus or whether that's blurry. So you can see I get that a little sharper and that's looking pretty good. Uh, so this zoom level here is just a preview. It's not going to affect uh, the overall zoom of the camera. Um, so when we go ahead and take that shot, we'll still get the overall shot that we originally saw when we weren't zoomed in. Now, once we've taken some shots on the camera, uh, we can review what we've taken pictures of by clicking the little uh, triangle button uh, down on the bottom of the rear of the camera. This lets us uh, bring up previous shots and we can scroll back and forth uh, through what we've taken pictures of. Now, we can do this just for review, uh, and then we can go back to our normal shooting menu by clicking that uh, triangle icon again. Or if we want to, we can delete some of these photos. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to delete this photo, I can click the little trash can icon, go ahead and select erase by uh, clicking over that navigation button, and then click set. Now, that is a permanent deletion, uh, so often it's better to just leave things on your camera card, uh, look at them on the computer after you're done shooting, and then decide what gets deleted and what doesn't. So I'm done shooting here. Uh, now to get the images from my camera to my computer, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off, open up that card and battery slot again, and we're just going to push down on the memory card gently and it should pop right out uh, and this goes into the card reader on my computer so if you're working on one of the lab computers uh, that's going to be on the back of the computer other times you might have uh, a separate little usb device uh, that acts as the card reader and from there you can copy the files on the memory card into your own personal storage uh, for safekeeping